Today we will show you how to paint red slot from Nozer's Marvelous Miniatures. Hey guys! This is Nisa from Denif Imagination. I have a tutorial on basic level for you. It's going to be a red slot from Nozer's Marvelous Miniatures. And it's been painted by one of our painters, Maciej, and narrated by Agnieszka. This is a basic level painting tutorial, so if you're new to the painting world, this tutorial is just for you. Now Agnieszka will go at you through the painting experience. Enjoy! First, let's check that we have everything we need from our paint list. For this project, we will use black, black red, dark sea green, light flesh, refractive green, vermilion red, park green, parasite brown, beastie brown, hexed lichen, heavy red, and black green. The first step in painting process is primering. It is very important not to skip that part. But because Whiskits offers us already primed models, we do not have to worry ourselves about that and apply the first layer. For our base coat we chose heavy red. This model is quite large, so we also choose bigger brush, wide brush number 12 to be exact. Put some paint on your palette. Take your brush and add some water to your paint. Then start to paint the model with the first layer. It is always better for base coating to use two thinner layers than the thicker one. The goal is to cover the surface evenly, but it is always safer to use two or more thinner layers than one thick, because thick layer of paint can cover the details of the sculpture. And also, while painting larger surfaces, the smaller brushes can leave some traces, so to achieve a smooth layer, big brush is the safest option. Wide brushes allows you to cover more surface with one stroke and faster too. Acrylics are paints that work better on dry surfaces, so be patient here. Now that you can see that our first layer is even and there is no transparencies anywhere, we can proceed with the second step, creating shadows and we will use the black lining technique for this. Take black-red color and mix it together with black color. Next, take a bit of water and add it to your mix to make it more liquid. For black lining, the more liquid your paint is, the better. That is also why for these techniques, most of the times washes and inks are recommended. By this time, we will use mixed paint to not only teach you how to do that, but also because we want the right color for our model. Sometimes it is difficult to get the color that you want strictly from the bottle. In that kind of situations, you can mix two different paints and get the exact shade that you want. I am encouraging you to try mixing paints. You can get a lot of nice results. So now, another well-known technique to create shadow is washing. But when you should use wash and when black lining, Definitely it depends on our preference or our vision, but sometimes it depends also on the size of the model. Washes works better on smaller surfaces or when you use it on specific details. Wash can be also very handy when the surface have a distinct texture. When you have a model that is bigger like this one, wash can be problematic and create stains and smudges. In that situation, it is better to apply black lining. Black lining as a technique allows us to have full control over our shadows so our model can stay clean and our colors vivid. So when your mix is ready, take round brush number zero and carefully with the tip of your brush trace the edges of the muscles, joints and other segments when the shadow should be the strongest. Sometimes while painting with more liquid paints, you can observe that your brush create a foam. This is completely normal and you can easily take it off with your brush. On some places, you can paint your shadows more widely, but don't do that on the whole surface, but only on the places where the sculpture requires that.
Here we are showing finished black lining. After applying it, give your model time to dry out, because our next technique requires completely dry exterior. When you notice that your model is ready, you can start applying highlights with dry brush. Take white brush number 6 and color vermilion red, which is brighter than heavy red. And let's explain first what exactly dry brush is. According to its name, dry brush is a technique when you are using a dry brush while painting. It means you are not dipping it into the water. Take some paint on the tip of your brush and then wipe it out on the paper towel. When the brush will leave like a mist effect on the towel, you are ready to begin. Start to stroke the surface of the model with short and gentle movements like you would clean it from the dust. After some time, you will notice the lighter color appearing on the skin of the slug. Dry brush is the technique that is the best for the beginners, but still can be very useful even on higher levels of painting. You can also use it on almost every size of the surface. Dry brush will also help us to emphasize the texture of the skin. With the dry brush, it is very important to remember about another thing. To always try to wipe out the paint from your brush correctly. If you would leave too much paint on your brush, it can leave smudges on your model. And because acrylics get to dry very fast and we are working with dry brush, it can get very hard to clean it off. So the thing about dry brush is that it always weakens the deepness of the color. That's why we are going to use the second technique to make the highlights stronger. And we will do that with glaze and lining. So take vermilion red again and with round brush size 2, mix your paint with water enough to get some transparency and start to adjust this paint on the most strategic places when the light should be the strongest. Thanks to that, we are saturating the color and making the model more striking in the same time. Glaze is a technique of layers, really. So remember what we said about giving one layer the time to get dry before you will add another one. While glazing, you are mostly using the tip of your brush and that's why it is very important to take good care about your brushes. The most important is to not allow to paint to gather in the heel of the brush. With acrylics that are getting dry quite quickly, it can be very difficult to wash that later. Let's deal with the eyes now. First, take light flesh color and with run brush number one, paint the eyeballs with even layer. When it gets dry, use vermilion red. Thanks to white base coat, the red will be more vivid than that on the skin. Next, take vermilion red and mix it with light flesh to get lighter shade of red. Use this color to paint a line on the eyes to mark the round shape of the eyes.
When you will be done, take black paint and with small brush draw very thin lines as pupils on the eyes. It's time for clothes and pikes. Take black color and round brush number one and cover with them their surface evenly. Be careful not to overpaint the skin in the slot, but if you do, don't worry. You can always wait for the paint to get dry and repaint it with the right color. After that, take white brush number 6 and with dark sea green color, use dry brush technique to create highlights on them. You can use dry brush technique in almost every element of your model. It all depends really on the size of your brush and your experience. Also remember that your brush needs to be clean and dry. For the next step, take BC Brown and white brush number 2. Paint the teeth with one even layer. After this, take Parasite Brown and highlight them with lining and small dots. Now take white brush number 2 and with black green ink paint randomly some dots and stripes on the skin.
After this, take Park Green flat and highlight those dots with it. For the last step, take Hexed Lichen, mix it generously with water and add some of it on the skin as additional color to enrich the overall look. For the base, use white brush number 6 to paint the base with refractive green. Be careful when you will paint the ground next to the feet of the slud. You can change your brush for a smaller one to feel safer while doing that. Allow the base to get dry. After this, use black paint and by adding a lot of water, make it wash-like. Use round brush number 2 and cover the base with it. When the base will be dry again, take dark sea green and dry brush the surface. For the last step, take black paint and with round brush size 0, draw a line around the eyes that will give depth to the eyes.
I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. I really like the finished results. We are really curious about your results too. So tag us, Den of Imagination, in your social medias and share your results with us. And don't forget to smash the like button. Let us know in the comment section what you think of it. See you in the next one. Bye bye.